so that it was uh, uh, established at the time of the first uh, suspended, but uh, stability with uh, your Excellency President, uh, uh, and uh, we have been continuing until today, probably no, but probably will continue. The place is a, a cradle cradle of the Japanese uh, assistance to, to the uh, we, uh, I'm very proud of that fact very much so I wanted to say yeah so second I jumped in the uh, financing issue and particip participation of the uh, financing on the authority establishing authority or a special fund uh, I would say that uh, uh, any government uh, uh, is struggling to make a perfect budget. Uh, uh, in Japan, for example, uh, our tax, tax revenue covers the government expenditure only 50% or 55%, uh, so that uh, every year we are borrowing but also in the expenditure, we have a lot of amount to uh, 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 repay uh, the, the uh, government debts. Huh? So that uh, uh, no, uh, it is almost, almost it is actually impossible to satisfy everybody. I think uh, so. Let alone in a developing country like uh, Uganda, so that nobody, uh, yeah, every it is not possible to to satisfy everybody. So that uh, is uh, also uh, the area of the uh, uh, mm, skills development. Yeah. So that, uh, uh, that the government learned to see what is the priority uh, and uh, what comes next. Uh, I think that is the role of the government, yeah, and uh, absorbing the dis dis voices of the dis dissatisfaction from all over the side, mm -hmm. but uh, nevertheless, the government has to, to decide uh, annual budget mm -hmm. in time, otherwise government cannot move. So that uh, uh, is a, a, a basic uh, concept or assumption. Then coming back to that, uh, uh, the budget of the security, sec uh, security development, I would say that the basic and the general uh, vocational training uh, is a role of the public sector government because that benefit or throughout the sector, even uh, maybe fishery or uh, maybe uh, there are specific needs, but as a sector wide, there are some standard uh, required uh, skills. So that, that may be the role of uh, the private uh, public sector. Uh, there, but there are some specific needs uh, uh, of the industry sectors or individual uh, companies. Uh, for example, in Japan, there are a lot of uh, public uh, vocational training skills, schools, and they, they, uh, they do a lot of uh, basic skills. But once they uh, employed, then that uh, uh, each company uh, has uh, its in-house training, uh, sometimes using outsourcing, uh, depending on the skills, uh, plus on the job training. So that uh, uh, I'm a bit afraid to, to levy uh, from the industry sector. Someone said that already uh, uh, private sector is burdened by number of the levies. You know? And uh, to making a special fund uh, means uh, generating uh, administration again. Yeah. So, so, so that uh, I, besides uh, accountability, transparency, uh, I'm a bit afraid of making a special fund together with some administration that uh, is very uh, scarce money 
go to the administration. Uh, so that if uh, some industrial sector uh, recognize as a sector to have some specific uh, uh, training for the entire sector, maybe uh, that uh, private sector of that industry may make uh, its own uh, uh, facility uh, of the training and supported by maybe subsidy of the uh, government or uh, local government. That, that uh, personally more healthy in financing. Uh, I've got uh, such a uh, um, impression. Uh, about the one lady talked about uh, certificate issue. Th that is uh, very much a, a interesting point to me that uh, in the Western world, uh, so some paper like a doctorate or a magist magistrate, uh, those uh, uh, postgraduate papers are very appreciated. Uh, sometimes without specific in that regard. Uh, so that we didn't pay much attention about such a diploma or uh, any certificate. Important things that have a practical experience. So uh, newly uh, graduate students, uh, if they are capable, normally go to be employed in the private companies. Uh, some uh, graduates who really want to have a basic research, uh, then go to postgraduate. Uh, and even uh, 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 students who finished uh, secondary school, uh, who, ha who will have uh, 20 years, 30 years experience, they will be a higher position to supervise newcomers. Uh, so that uh, Japan uh, I think in uh, contacting some support to Nakawa, we didn't pay much attention to that. But as uh, she mentioned that uh, there are problem in this country, uh, like Western countries, some kind of uh, uh, recognized paper is needed to, uh, to be placed in the such a managerial position. So that uh, 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 we started uh, our uh, support project uh, to uh, place uh, uh, to invent uh, diploma courses uh, of the sex, uh, all sector wise. So, so that uh, uh, I hope that that would help uh, graduates uh, to, to be easily employed, then uh, I think that is a good uh, uh, way forward. Yeah. Uh, uh, that is a <laughs> Uh, those are my kind of remarks uh, uh, reflecting the discussion I have had. So uh, I don't know if we <laughs> you understand me or not, but uh, that is my very frank, frank views about this issue. And uh, finally, uh, I know that the government uh, is, uh, government of Uganda is uh, supporting uh, as a priority infrastructure yeah, to attract foreign investments. Yes, yes, for investment uh, to be attracted, infrastructure is very important, but for foreign companies like Japanese, they may come, but uh, also need to, to hire skilled people, skilled workers, skilled young people, so that I'm uh, always calling that uh, vocational training as a uh, education is a kind of soft infrastructure and hard infrastructure and soft infrastructure have to come side by side. So that uh, Japan uh, is going to continue to, to support uh, uh, hard infrastructure in Uganda and soft infrastructure like uh, vocational training in Uganda. Thank you very much. <laughs> Can I invite <laughs> that today's <laughs> host, <laughs> my colleague? Ambassador of the Kingdom of Belgium.
Her Excellency, Minister of Education and Sports, First Lady, uh, Mrs. Janice Museveni, His Excellency, the Ambassador of Japan, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. After a, a long morning of intense discussions and productive exchange of thoughts, I have the honor to close this front table together with, of course, the minister and, and my colleague, uh, the Ambassador of Japan. I'm, I'm very happy to have been able to welcome at this round table, Ugandan education specialists, delegations from Ghana, Namibia, Rwanda, members of the private sector, actors, musicians, and even a Belgian chef who will soon serve you a Belgian-Japanese fusion lunch. The chef comes from Le Chateau. He's probably already trying for one hour to keep everything warm, but sorry for that except for the sushi, which is cold by nature, I guess. One could argue that today we witnessed technical trainings in all these aspects. Allow me to thank all speakers and participants today who have contributed to this interesting exchange of thoughts. And I would like to thank uh, His Excellency, former Rwandese Minister of Infrastructure and Secretary of State for Technical Education, Mr. Albert Tsengiyumva, for his keynote speech and also its very uh, uh, good conclusions and recommendations which we all are taking aboard. As well as, of course, uh, the MC Samson Kasumba for steering us deliberately and in his most unique and humorous way into muddy waters and putting us sometimes on the wrong footing by surprising interventions, but by doing so, initiating very interesting and vivid debates. Thank you so much. We are most grateful, of course, to the First Lady, uh, Excell Excellency Ms. Janet Museveni and our team to present here today, to be present here today, acknowledging the importance of technical education and South-South cooperation. On Monday, we opened uh, together, we commissioned together the National Teachers College in, in Caliro, and uh, in one and the same week, you honor us with our, your presence again, so that this is a, a sign of the very strong partnership between Belgium and Uganda in the education sector. Thank you. <laughs> Many thanks also to the BTVET team of the BTC and to our embassy colleagues involved for all the hard work. I've seen many documents arriving at 2, 3 o'clock at night, so thank you very much, uh, dear colleagues. As we have seen the importance of private sector involvement in achieving modern demand-driven skills development cannot be underestimated. Therefore, we are very grateful that some of Uganda's champions of industry were either here today or were present in the video in order to share their views and debate about their priorities, the obstacles that they see and their future role. Belgium believes strongly in the importance of technical and vocational training seeing the crucial role it can play with regards to economic and socio-economic developments. Although I have one or two university degrees myself, it needs to be acknowledged that the country needs more than professors, academic researchers, and university graduates, or ambassadors for that matter. I was very much, uh, uh, very much liked uh, the, the, the the quote of, of, of the First Lady when she talks about that we have to finish this cycle of education starting with the head, the heart, but what has been missing a little bit is the hands and we have to finish this cycle. I myself use most of all my head, maybe sometimes my heart, I hope, but very little my hands except for shaking hands. And this is not enough. I lost my, my thought here. Um, a private sector here as well as in my home country can only thrive and grow if it has access to people who are technically skilled. I do have a toolbox at home, but I'm not such a technical skilled man. And who have been prepared to work in a private sector setting and who have been taught how to acquire new skills when necessary. I also come from a country with little natural resources left. Nevertheless, Belgium is one of the biggest exporters per capita in Europe. And why is that? Because we have a skilled labor force, which helps us to attract investment from local companies as well as from abroad. 
Development is not just about infrastructure, roads, and natural resources, oil, etc. It is as much or even more about education, training, and skills, building a workforce that can contribute to the national economy. It is because Belgium is convinced of the crucial role of technical and vocational training that we organize this roundtable discussion on skills development today. The reason being that the issues and obstacles that Uganda encounters in this field are far from being unique, while the solutions might be closer to home than we might think, and we heard that today. Also, our Minister of Development Cooperation, Mr. Alexander de Croix, believes strongly in the importance of private sector development. This is why in several other partner countries, we are moving in the direction of much closer cooperation between private actors and development cooperation, focusing on those partners and partner institutions that understand the importance of skilling and the urgency of reform. In this context, it is also no coincidence that we chose for Nakawa Technical School as the venue for this roundtable meeting. Education is about long-term investing and about partnership, and the cooperation between the Triangle Japan, Nakawa Technical School and private company, companies is for us an example on how we can link our development priorities with private sector engagement and existing education institutions. One word about the Skilling Uganda strategy. We heard that it was launched five years ago in Jinja and maybe not as enough as moved since. We believe that the game changer for this plan is the inclusion of the private sector in the coordination, management and potentially even the financing of skills development in Uganda. Linking private sector to technical and vocational training is essential to guarantee that students who leave their school or institute find a job and a place in the labor market, allowing them to gain an income, provide for their family, and find their place in society. However, before we can arrive at this stage, better coordination and management of skills development will be needed to make the Skilling Uganda strategy work. And there we're also talking about the Skills Development Authority, Skills Development Funds, etc. The current institutional framework leaves different education institutions too much scattered and without any centralized decision-making power, although necessary to make progress. Moreover, skilling is concentrated in one ministry while it clearly covers many different actors and sectors. Last but not least, the link with the private sector is too weak and not sufficiently institutionalized, while the students and the schools themselves are not implicated enough in the current skilling framework. And we did hear today some proposals from, among others, uh, Ghana, Namibia, about this possible collaboration between government and private sector in this, in this respect, and also in which way it could be organized. Of course, every country is different, so it's not the goal to take over models from another country, but it's just to hear about best practices and see how they could actually be used here. Over in the past few years, a number of development models have pledged their support to the implementation of the paradigm, parag paradigm shift contained in the Skilling Uganda strategic plan, including, beside the Belgian government, also the Irish government, the European Union, and, and the World Bank. Other education development partners, such as the Netherlands, Germany, Ireland, South Korea, and of course Japan, are contributed to the realization of the Skilling Uganda agenda through different skills development projects. Ladies and gentlemen, this round table was initiated to bring together experts and skills development practitioners in the region to share experience on modern demand-driven innovative ideas for skills development. Learning from Rwanda, where the reform process is ex accelerated since 2008, as well as from experiences on the one-stop shop for skills development in Namibia and the formation of a skills development fund in Ghana. We have heard it all. All these examples and best practices show us that there is absolutely no reason why Uganda should lag behind in the field of skills development, nor further delay the urgent institutional reforms to support its ambitions. We are optimistic that the knowledge and experience shared during the dialogue today will support the government of Uganda in setting up successful skill development systems that respond to the need of the employers. 
especially the willingness that we heard of the private sector to get actively involved and also financially towards, for example, an, a, a skill development fund is very promising and should be highly, highly encouraged. Because matching the acquired skills with the need of the private sector is in the advantage of everybody involved, the companies, the job seekers, and the economy as a whole. As chair of the Education Development Partner Group, Belgium would like to confirm its commitment with regards to the successful implementation of the Skilling Uganda Reform Agenda in close partnership, as we always have done, and dialogue with the Minister of Education, the other education developer partners, but also the private sector. We are therefore looking forward to the continued dialogue about the future of skills development with, both, with, with all those actors involved. It's important to look ahead and no longer behind. Old recipes, conservative ideas and lack of imagination will only hamper the development of Skilling Uganda, while its success is crucial for Uganda's progress and the well-being of its young people who will enter the labor market tomorrow and many years to come. We still have a lot of work ahead and a long way to go. However, allow me to end with a Japanese quote that also seems fit to Uganda. Now, it's very dangerous here because, first of all, I might have the risk of pronouncing it horribly long, wrong, but even worse, it might mean something totally different than what my team told me it means. So, if that is the case, I apologize beforehand. But let me try. Shoda mo tsumoreba taiboku o tausu. Did you understand? Oh. And you are not insulted. Oh, no, okay. If, if, if I was informed correctly, it translates something like, with many little strokes, a large tree is felled, is felled, which actually means that changing established ideas cannot be done in one go. It can be achieved gradually by small steps, a little at a time. And let us take these steps together as partners as we are without any further delay. And now I have the pleasure to invite on stage the first lady of the country, Minister of Education and Sport, Ms. Janet Museveni. the ambassadors and members of the diplomatic corps, the ambassadors of Belgium and Japan, delegates from our sister countries present here today, representatives of the education partners present, uh, central and local government officials, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It was with a lot of appreciation that I accepted this invitation to participate in the South to South Conference on Skills Development and uh, the key role to ensure sector-led change towards sustainable financing and coordination. Uh, permit me now to thank all of you who have participated in this unique and high-level event that has brought together key stakeholders at the crossroads of global skills development, high-level officials from both public and private sector to discuss skills development in our region. I, in a way, I want to say something like the Japanese ambassador said, because I think my statement when it was written, I had no idea what would really take place here. Some of it may not uh, uh, make sense after we've done a lot of talking and I've done a lot of learning, 
but please uh, accept it as it is. I salute the skills development experts from our sister countries, from Rwanda, Namibia, and Ghana. And I must thank you really for accepting to share your invaluable and rich experiences in skills development like you did here today. And unemployment among the youth in our country is very high and demands different approaches to skills development. The National Labor Survey of 2012-2013 estimated the national labor force of Uganda at 12.6 million and the youth aged between 18 and 30 constitute the majority, 63%. According to the statistics at hand, the national unemployment rate is 9.4% and is particularly higher among the youth at 11.2%. The high unemployment rate among the youth is mainly attributed to the skills mismatch in the labor market that, demanded for, that demands for a paradigm shift for skills development in Uganda, like I'm sure we all now agree. As a response, the Ministry of Education and Sports is implementing a 10-year bit-to-bit strategic plan entitled skilling Uganda, whose implementation arm has surely been enriched by today's discussion. I'm aware that the round table discussion has focused on sharing experiences for replication in the implementation of the skilling Uganda reform agenda. The recommendations reached on on how private sector and champions of industry, the government and training institutions can work together, develop relevant skills based on identified skills gaps and value chain analysis, will indeed enrich our plans for the future. The participation of the private sector is highly appreciated. I applaud the role of the private sector and champions of industry in partnering with government and training institutions in discussing curriculum and training program and facilitating of skills development uh, in, their in their industries. Um, we we'll encourage our, our, our young people to get to that um, experience that they are requested to have every time they are looking for jobs, they are told they must have experience. And they are not fortunate to have that experience because they never get to work. So this partnership now that allows interns to come into industry to pick some experiences will really help our unemployment to perhaps go a little lower because people will have that experience to build on to look for employment, knowing what the industries are demanding, knowing what the world of work is about. So I want to encourage the private sector and uh, our champions of industry to take keen interest and show willingness to make some sacrifices to allow interns learning in their industries, even though they said, as their representative mentioned here, that they are overwhelmed. And we can understand that, but sometimes countries must be willing to make some sacrifices as they create that foundation uh, for, for take off. So I, I want to encourage the private sector to really be willing to make those sacrifices. The Minister of Education and Sports 
has embarked on ensuring that every priority sector highlighted in the National Development Plan has a sector skills council in place to redefine the kind of products we would wish to see in their industry or their sector. I'm well informed that these sector skills council have a role to provide labor market information that will assist in long-term business planning, uh, establishing occupational standards and ensuring that training programs are in fact demand driven. In addition to all these initiatives, the government is in the process of establishing the presidential initiative on youth employment that will be chaired by the president himself. This is after the president has learned that uh, there are so many of our young people who are qualified from the many um, high training institutes in the country who are unemployed because they are not skilled. So government has offered to ensure that those very highly trained people, as those young people were showing us, now have the opportunity to go back into the skills development training institutes to train for skills so that they can be qualified to go back into the world of work and demand, you know, to be considered for employment because they now have the base of the qualification they have achieved from the, the, the universities and high institutions of higher learning, but they also have the skills developed, you see, their skills developed for particular areas of work. And so we think that uh, this presidential initiative will also help to empower uh, our youth for getting skilled. This will be to address youth unemployment in a more coordinated and streamlined manner that ensures that all initiatives by your stakeholders are in line with government policy on skills development. Let me now salute the Belgian as the chair for making this conference possible. And to all education development partners, really, especially the Japanese who have put up this uh, uh, vocational training for 40 years, as we've been told, I think we deserve, we, they deserve a major clap. I thank you for your continued support to the education sector in general and skills development in particular through various projects. I want to re-echo my ministry's commitment to work with all education development partners, the private sector, and champions of industry to move the Skilling Uganda agenda to another level. With the support from all of you, especially the private sector and industry players, we shall ensure that the training institutions respond to the labor market needs in the country. And I want to thank you, and God bless you. I have been told that I have been skilled with uh, at least uh, the vocals uh, for the national anthems. And uh, that's the only reason I'm back also to let you know that uh, a fusion of both Belgian and Japanese meals will be served for lunch. Ladies and gentlemen, with your permission, join me in standing up for the anthems. The East African anthem first. In that order. <laughs>
Bon appétit, that's Luganda. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, join us for the meal. Uh, Madame First Lady, we would like to thank you very much for giving this uh, time. It does mean that it means a bit to you, scaling Ugandans. And we wish you God's blessing in your next appointment. Hoping to see you soon. I'll let my daughters know that their grandmother said hello. <laughs> Well, there might be a photo opportunity um, uh, with the First Lady. Those of you who know how that goes, it will be out there. Time after time, I went searching for peace in some void. I was trying to blame all my what I was in oh yes surface relations used me till I was done in no oh, yeah I know there was someone was waiting to free me from my bed. He was there all the time. He was there all the time. Yes, I know. Waiting. Never, never again will I look for a fake rainbow zen. You see, I found the answer, and somehow it's just, it's just right. I'm sharing each new day with him it's a cup of fresh wine or I know oh what I've missed has been waiting right there all the time he was there And I think to myself, 
What a wonderful world Well, the colors of the rainbow So pretty in the sky Also on the faces of Ugandans going by I see friends shaking hands Saying how do you do They're really saying I love you Well I hear babies cry I watch them grow They learn much more Than I'll ever know And I think to myself I see friends shaking hands Saying how do you do They're really saying I love you Well I hear babies crying I watch them grow They learn much more Than I'll ever know And I think to myself What a wonderful country Well, I think to myself What a wonderful